Let us pray. Lord God, you give us so many things. You give us this world in which you place us. You, you give us the families that we are a part of and the communities that we are a part of, the work that we do. You give us things to eat and things to wear and things to, to have to, to celebrate. Lord, help us to see all that you give. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So as I was thinking about this sermon, I, I thought of an old song by the rock band Queen, which begins, I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. Now, that is a gospel, but it is not the gospel that we proclaim. It is a good news to somebody who wants it all and wants it now. And I do believe it's a very powerful message that our gospel comes into tension with because what it focuses on is what we don't have. You know, we live in a culture that wants us to believe that we live in scarcity. And that we need certain things to make us whole. This is not a new thing. It's been around for a lot of years. It's one of the things that underwrites um, a capitalistic society. And that, again, I'm not saying that, I, I just want to challenge the tension that exists between our faith and the world around us. Because this is used in marketing all the time to prey upon our fear that, you know, there is something out there that we are supposed to have and we are going to miss out on it. And we can, we can increase that, uh, that tension, that, that desire by saying, you know, here's your limited time offer, that here is your chance for the good life, here is your chance for happiness, and if you call now, if you're one of our next 30 callers, if you respond now, there's, here's your discount. It, you know, it's on sale for this weekend. All you need for the good life is there to be acquired. All you've got to do is break out your credit card. All you've got to do is sign your name on the dotted line. All you've got to do is sign away a little bit more of your life. I am not anti-things. Things in themselves are parts of the gift that God gives us. But what I do worry about is when we place those things in the place of God. We started this series with the first command where we heard Luther's explanation. We are to fear love, and trust God above all things. And God provides that which we need. God provides that which we need and more. And that doesn't stop us from getting called into this way of thinking that says, yeah, but here's what I'm missing. Here's where I don't have what I want because I want it all and I want it now and until I have that I won't be happy and I know a lot of people think of the idea of coveting is it's it's just not that big of a deal because it's only the thoughts of my mind it's only the direction of my heart is only this internal thing But it's only this internal thing that leads to everything else. Let me give you an example from our, our Old Testament reading for the day from 1 Kings, where 
King Ahab, who is the king over Israel or the northern tribes of Israel at this point. And he is a king who has an awful lot of power. He has an awful lot of, of uh, he's built a large army. He's consolidated a lot of power. He has a home in Samaria. He has a home in Jezreel. But he wants the field next to his home in Jezreel and the vineyard that is owned by Naboth. And so the desire of his heart is to acquire this thing. Now, without going into a whole lot of details, there's a whole lot of reasons why Naboth says, I won't sell it to you. But part of it is, this is the land that God has given to me, and it would be, it would be a rejection of the many gifts that God has given to take a different vineyard, to take money for this. This is God's gift. How could I reject God's gift? But it doesn't stop Ahab from coveting, from desiring it. And that coveting and desire leads to many things. And you can say, oh, well, it's all Jezebel's fault, but I can guarantee you that Jezebel is not going to be using Ahab's seal without Ahab knowing about it. And so coveting leads to false witness, and false witness leads to murder all so that Ahab can have that which is not his, which, when we're honest about it, is stealing. And you say, okay, well, we didn't get adultery in there. Okay, we go to the example of of David and Bathsheba, and there it is right there. You know, David desires. And so desire leads to adultery, and adultery leads to false witness, and false witness leads to the murder. And, okay, in this... In this case, stealing is left out, and in the other case, adultery is left out, and you know. But it's this coveting can become the root of all these things. You know, when uh, Luther talks about the commandments on coveting, and again, he breaks the the, the ninth and ten commandments. It breaks it in the ninth and ten commandments where we don't covet our neighbor's house and we don't covet our neighbor's relationships or things and again property was a big thing in the in the ancient world and so we don't try to trick our neighbor out of their property or claim to have a legal right to it we don't try to break up our neighbor's relationships or take those who work with them we try to keep them loyal to them and and again i think all these things evolve out of this space where we believe we don't have enough that what we have is not enough or good enough and that we will only be happy when we have that which is not ours right now, that which belongs to our neighbor, that which God has given to them. You either fear love and trust God above all things, or you fear love and trust something else. And I know this is a hard piece of that gospel because I think it's really easy to trust in other things. It's really easy to trust in our ability to provide for ourselves. It's really easy to to trust in the things that we have acquired and accumulated for ourselves. It's really easy to look at that and say, you know, this is what I'm entitled to and I'm entitled to more. I'm entitled to whatever I can wrap my hands around. I'm entitled to whatever I can carry with me. And the reality is it's not made us it's not made us happy it's not made us wise it's not made us kind it's not made us anything it's it's made us into people who are possessed by our possessions and i'm not saying that food is not important or that drink is not important or clothing is not important or housing is not important or jobs aren't important or relationships aren't important they are all important they are all gifts of god but they are not what we base our lives upon although an awful lot of people do you know jesus talks about you know pay attention to the birds they don't sow they don't gather but god provides for them look at the grass It's beautiful, and God provides for it, even though it only lasts for a short time. And that, look at the world around you and see how God provides for those things that are less valuable than you, and God will provide for you as well. And 
And I do think that one of the things that we as, as people in America struggle with is we struggle with the difference between ownership and stewardship. Ownership says it's mine and I need to protect it. I need to defend it. I need to add to it. I need to, and again, my neighbor is in competition with me and I'm, I'm afraid that my neighbor is going to get a bigger piece of the pie than me. I'm afraid that my neighbor is going to take that which is mine. And ownership does not lead us to, it leads us to thinking of this is what I'm entitled to. But stewardship is the biblical way of thinking about things. That this that we have is a gift from God that we are to care for. And as a gift, it is pure grace in and of itself. It is more than what we need. It is enough and we can celebrate it. And we don't have to worry about all these other things because God provides that which we need. God gives us our daily bread. And our daily bread is more than just the food that we eat or the clothes that we wear. It's the house that we live in. It is the relationships that we have. It's the work that we do. All these things are ways in which God has given to us and we respond by celebrating them as the gift that they are. You know, one of the gifts of our theology is that Everything is gift. Everything is grace. Everything is what God has allowed us to work with. And so we don't have to worry. We don't have to live in this world where we're afraid of what we don't have because God has given us enough. We don't have to be in competition with what everybody else has. And, and again, I worry the fact that, about the fact that we, we live in a world in which we are continually presented with what everybody, the, the very best picture of what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is purchasing, or what everybody else is eating, or all these different things, and it makes us not satisfied with what, what we're doing, or what we're eating, or what we're, or the relationships that we have. It drives us to think about the world in terms of scarcity. It drives us to look at, at not what we have, but what we think we need. Instead of saying, look at what God has provided for me. And yes, if, I, if there's something that I need, I know that my, my Heavenly Father knows the needs of my body and the needs of my heart. And so we can walk in faith and trust that God will give us, give us that which is not only that, the bare minimum of what we need, but indeed more. And I know it's hard because we are getting to the root of things. You know, uh, the book of James can say, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, the reality is I think that sometimes our love of the things that we don't have is the root that makes us dissatisfied with the very things that we do have with the very gifts that God has given. And it can be that root which digs deep into us and says, therefore, this is what you need to do to acquire these things from your neighbor, whether your neighbor is willing to part with them or not. These are the things that you need to do to, to structure your life around the acquisition of these things Instead of saying, God, you've given me enough. How do I structure my life where I give it back in gratitude for all that you've given me? May you know that this is a day that the Lord has made and so you can live in the gift where God provides daily bread, where God provides the things that you need. And we can wonder, you know, how do we live in light of the gift that we have? Instead of wondering, how do we live in the scarcity of the things that we don't? Because we, love, we can fear love and trust God above all things, who provides that which we need. Thanks be to God. Amen.